So we have one parity drive right here with seven remaining disks. We should have around 98 terabytes total of usable space. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today on this episode of Newegg Now, I'm gonna be diving into the DIY NAS that I just built. If you're interested in that process, the video is already up on my channel. Be sure to check it out. If you're interested in any of the products for this build, they'll be linked in the video description. First, let's go over those parts in more detail. So here are all the parts and components on Newegg. You can see our build came in right at around $3,000, but this does not include the extra $70 I spent on an HBA card from LSI on eBay. So you have to factor that in as well. And don't be intimidated by that price. You do not have to buy as many drives as I had. You can change the capacity, mix and match brands, that sort of thing. I would recommend using some extra parts and components maybe you have lying around the house as well. So here's what we got. Brand new EVGA 500 watt power supply. This is not fully modular, but that should be fine for what we're doing. You might want to get one. Depends on how many drives, etc. So next up, we have our SanDisk 16 gig cruiser. This is just a USB flash drive. Our OS is going to be stored on that. 16 gigs of RAM that I had lying around in my test bench. That's what we're going to use. Next up, we had to get one of these splitter cables so we could get more options to connect all eight of our hard drives. Then you can see I added two fans into this build because our fractal design case down here only came with 240 millimeter fans. So I wanted to get a couple more. The added bonus is these have a white LED light that looks really cool. Nobody will see it, but it's still really cool nonetheless. Next up, we have a 10 gig network adapter. This is great for me to get some faster file transfer speeds. We don't want to have a saturated network and that be the bottleneck for this build. I chose the Fractal Design Define R5 case because it has eight hard drive bays, perfect for what I need. They have some other great options too. And then I landed on the Seagate drive. It's a 14 terabyte drive. I purchased eight of them. So I thought it was a really good value. It's actually cheaper than the NAS drives, but this is an enterprise rated drive. So I expect longevity to hold up just fine. Next up, shout out to Lexargon for sending us some... Um, M.2 drives we're going to use as our cache drives in this build. So we have one, one terabyte and two 500 gigabyte drives. Next up, I had an i5-11400F that I was using as a test bench. So we're going to take that and this MSI motherboard. Currently out of stock, but hopefully when you're watching this, it'll be back in stock. But I'm going to be using those as kind of the brains of the operation. And on my test bench, I already had this Cooler Master Hyper H412R compact CPU air cooler installed. So we're going to keep using that cooler as well. So that's a quick look at the build again, coming in right at around $3,000, but you can mix and match. You don't have to spend that much, or you can exceed me, one up me, flex on me and spend even more. Now let's go ahead. Let's watch the build come together. So the first thing we're going to do with this particular build is I'm going to swap and rearrange the fans. So we have this rear exhaust fan and we have one intake fan up here. I'm going to take the rear exhaust fan out and we're going to move that up to the front so we'll have two intake fans there and then i have these two corsair fans that we're going to install in the back of the case we'll do one for the exhaust and we'll probably do another one for the exhaust up top so now you can see i have the rear exhaust fan uninstalled and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to install it in the front panel so you can see where the first one's already installed by default with the case we can clip this back on and get our fans installed in the back so now you can see what it looks like with the fans installed right here so we have the two corsair fans in the back we have a back exhaust and we have a top exhaust right there. Next up, it's time to install our three cache drives. So our one terabyte drives under our heat sink right here in Shield. Then you can see we have our two additional 512 gigabyte Lexar drives installed in our two remaining slots. So now we're ready to install our motherboard right here. Anywhere where we have A on the board, that's where we're gonna install our standoff brackets. Once those are installed, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clip in our faceplate as well. You do not wanna forget the faceplate if your motherboard has one. So now you can see we got the motherboard installed and fastened in place. Everything's looking great. Plenty of space in this case too so far. And you can see from the back side right here, we have our IO shield properly installed as well too. So now you can see we got the power supply installed in the base of our case and we have all of the cables currently routed out the back. So check it out. You can see we have one hard drive installed right here on the tray and then it's just going to slide right in like you see right here. So now you can see we have all eight installed right here. Now we're ready to connect our drives. So we used our StarTech adapter cable right here. You can see it. We connected those four with it. 
four from our power supply, and then we took our other power supply runner here and connected the StarTech cable to it with the extra one to our last drive, and we connected our fan hub power to it as well. Now we gotta work on connecting the data side. So here's our HBA card right here. So from these two connectors, we have our breakout cables that came with it that we're gonna be able to connect all of our drives to. And it should just gently snap in place. So there we go. Now you can see what it looks like from the back side with our breakout cables connected. What's nice is they're labeled P1, 2, 3, and 4, P1, 2, 3, and four and we'll install our network card right there so now as just a precaution i went ahead i booted up the system to make sure everything was working properly before i did any cable management as promised here's a close-up look at all the cable connectors right here so first up we have our hba card with our two breakout cables you can see down on our motherboard our header right there for our audio then you can see usb then we have our power button led lights right there Moving further up, you can see with our USB 3.0, our power to the board, and we have our fan connected right there to our fan hub. Then going up to the top, you can see our CPU fan right there, and then last but not least, we have our CPU power. And on the back side right here, you can see we have all of our drives connected, so you can see our eight power cables right here, and then you can see our eight data cables as well in blue connected to our drives, and you can kind of get a feel for how everything else was run along the back side and just kind of tucked out of the way. So now you can see we're in Unraid on the NAS right now. So that's the OS we have installed at the moment. I'm trying it out to see if I like it. So we have one parity drive right here with seven remaining disks. We should have around 98 terabytes total of usable space. Further down, we have our pool devices right here. Again, we have those three M.2 drives. Two are the 512 gig. We're gonna use one as a cache drive and one as our backup. And then the remaining one as an editing drive, the one terabyte M.2. Then you can see our boot device right here. So that's a quick look at the array. And you can see too our temperatures, everything's doing great. So we have the panels back on. I actually put two out of the three top panels back up on the top as well. So we just have the exhaust fan. And instead of having the grating exposed, I went ahead and covered those. If for some reason it gets too hot, I'll remove those. But so far, so good with the thermals. Then you can see our M.2 drives right here. Keep in mind, our one terabyte drive does have the included heat sink on that came with the motherboard. The other two do not have any heat sinks on them. Now you can see I got the device properties pulled up for both of the drives on our network. And you can see we have 90 terabytes of usable space. Somehow we're already using 685 gigabytes. Not sure how and why that's the case. And I thought we'd have around 98 terabytes usable, but you can see right here, we got 90 accessible from Windows with the drive on our network. So I took both of those drives and I decided to conduct a speed test. So you can see, I did a crystal disk mark test for both of those drives and we got eerily similar results. So my first thought is that's not really a legit test over the network for both these drives and somehow it's pulling either off the cache or off the array or something like that. But you can see I ran the test nonetheless, and I did select the correct network folder for each one. But you can see the results right here look like it would just be the difference in running the test again. So from this test, I cannot see any noticeable difference between both of the drives, whether using it with the cache or without the cache. And along those lines, I decided to go ahead. I copied over the same folders to both of the drives and same thing. I was not able to tell a difference in regards to copying. Typically with my 4K video projects, let's just say it's 20 gigabytes or so, we were getting around 100 to 120 megabytes a second. Didn't matter, matter if it was the cache drive or the non-cache drive, we were seeing the same results. So with that being said, I also edited the same 4K video on both drives. Couldn't tell any difference between the two with the 4K previews loading or anything in Premiere. They both seem to be the same speeds. The good news is neither of them were lagging at all over the network, which is what I wanted at the end of the day. I'm still not sure I'm getting the fastest speeds possible or anything like that, but right now for my needs, the good news is it is working. I can access and edit the files directly from my NAS, which is really cool. Now, lastly, I also decided I was going to export the videos to each respective network folder as well. And sure enough, same thing. I did a stopwatch timer 
for both of them when I pushed export to see how long they took. And unfortunately, it was both were around two minutes, 45 seconds. Again, I think there was about a 10 second difference with the cache one being 10 seconds faster. But for me, it's very inconclusive and I haven't been able to find any tangible reasons for using the cache drives in Unraid for video editing. But let me know in the comment section below if you've seen similar results or if you've seen different results with your setup. But specifically, this is in regards to 4K video editing. Copying, couldn't tell a difference. Editing, couldn't tell a difference. And if I was using Crystal, crystal Dismark the right way, if that's even possible with Unraid, we got basically identical results again in performance. So the good news is for me in my particular case right now in this moment for my business in the videos that we're editing, it is capable of giving us a nice editing experience over our NAS. Well, that concludes our video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget the product link will be in our video description below. Please go ahead, check it out and do your shopping from there. Any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you. So we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support. While you're at it, can you go ahead and hit that like button for us? And subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat. Check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.